to episode 190 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 11th of November. So welcome everybody. I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So today I have some knitting, some cross stitch, some sewing, a blast from the past, some confessions. <laughs> I have another excuse. <laughs> and some information on my shop at the end of the podcast. So we have the Craft 20 a Day make-along going on in the Ravelry group and on Instagram. The details for that are in the description bar down below, but it basically goes right till the end of the year and it just involves doing a little bit of work on a project every day so that you can get those bigger projects done. So let's go on with the knitting shall we? I have a finished object. I did show you last week that I'd been working on my fourth pair of my Starlight Wishes socks and this is a pattern that is coming out on the 1st of December for everybody who didn't purchase one of the pre-order kits, one of the Starlight Wishes and sock sets. So if you don't want to see it I'll put a timestamp on the screen so you can skip along if you, if you want to sort of save yours till Christmas. But I'm going to show it now so look away. So here we are, I have a finished pair of the Starlight Wishes socks and these are the pattern that I designed to go with the Starlight Wishes yarn which was a kit that I made up with a bag for this sort of Christmassy, festive period and um, basically you've got shooting stars across the sky, some twinkling stars in the background and these little bobbles are to represent snowballs in a sort of midnight snowball fight. That was the idea. And I designed them so that the, all the detail is up here. So that when you sort of get closer to Christmas, you've got um, a plain foot to knit. These are actually knitted in a four-ply yarn. But there are instructions for both four-ply and DK um, in the pattern. And they will be available on the 1st of December for everybody who didn't pre-order one of the kits. Everybody who pre-ordered one of the kits has already received their pattern, hopefully. And I knitted these particular pair in some yarn I had in my stash for ages. And it's called Valbella Sock Yarn. And I couldn't remember where I got it from, but somebody reminded me in the comments last week that actually, I think I might have got it from Lidl, some bargain yarn. So I did pick it up from Lidl, I think, and it's a, a mixture of just wool and nylon, um, but it does show the pattern up quite nicely because it is in a solid colour. So it's a nice way to show you the pattern on the podcast. So I've finished the whole pair and now I've got four pairs of these to show you when the pattern comes out properly. So those are finished. And the next thing I've got to show you is a work in progress. Now, I've picked up my Stephen West shawlography shawl again and I'm sort of, I was steaming away on it but then I did make some mistakes but I've made some modifications. <laughs> so the last section of the shawlography is this board around the edge. Now I actually started to do mine wrong and then I decided that actually my mistake, I preferred the look of it. So this last section around the edge is the last clue of the shawl. So this here is supposed to be the right side, but I'd actually started it on the wrong side of the shawl somehow. But I'd done sort of this much and then I decided actually I quite liked the way that it blended from one colour into another. Can you see the little pearl bumps of the opposite colour? That sort of blend in a little bit and I've actually preferred that because it goes with this section here where there's pearl, bump, pearl bumps of the the opposite colour within the garter stitch ridges so I thought actually that went really well so I'm putting it on back to front basically <laughs> and I have done let's see how am I going to hold this I've just done just over half of this board a bit all the way around the outside but you can see the ends are all on the wrong side but I'm gonna um, sew those in I'll thread them through the back which should have been the front but never mind <laughs> um, I'll thread them through the back and sew them in Stephen has a technique called the weaving Stephen to sew in the ends but I don't like doing that on a shawl um, where the gauge is a little bit looser rather than I, I could do something like that on a sock or something where the gauge is tighter but I find that with the shawl gauge I like to just sew them in by hand and I don't mind sewing in all the ends I will go back and sew all those in hopefully over the weekend and get the whole thing finished so you can see 
where all the different clues are when i've blocked this out i'm hoping that the um the different colors will come out more in section one and i just it was so much fun to have a go at knitting all these textures and i think that it'll look a lot better when it's blocked i must admit it's not my favorite out of all the stephen west's mystery knit alongs last year was my absolute favorite but i have actually really enjoyed knitting this it has been one of my favorite sort of projects this year just because you don't know what's coming next it's so exciting and i think if you choose a range of colors that you really like then you can't really go wrong um, but there we go. That is my Stephen West shawlography at the moment. I think I've got about 20 more stripes to do this side, so I'm just over halfway. But I am really enjoying doing this. It's a very simple stripe pattern all the way around the outside where I don't have to think too much and I can watch the telly. <laughs> so there we go. Hopefully I can get rid of all these ends next week and get it all blocked to show you. So that is what I've been working on knit-wise this week. Oh, I almost forgot to say, this is knitted with my fade to grey um, set, but it's it's obviously full skeins rather than the minis that I've got in my shop at the moment. I will be dyeing more of these colours um, in January once I start dyeing to order again after the baby comes. Um, so I will have some of these colours available because a few people have asked me if, if they'll be available in larger skeins rather than just the mini sets that are in the shop at the moment. So my next section is cross stitch and I haven't done loads on my cross stitch this week. There's a few days I missed out but I have been stitching on the cross stitch guilds little mini sampler. See if I can hold them up at the same time so you can see what they look like. Um, but you can see that I haven't done a lot. I've just been doing these leafy bits around the bottom. Um, and I'm going to hopefully get a bit more done this week. I am enjoying these muted colours. Really fun to sew on. And this is a linen material that came in with the kit. It says on the pack, it's 28 count cashel linen. And it came with all the threads, which is brilliant. So that's my progress on my cross stitch this week. I will leave links to all the stuff that I use for cross stitch in the description bar as well, if you're interested in any of those things, rather than uh, me sort of telling you what I use every week. So now I'm onto the sewing section. I've been working on a baby mobile. So Adam has bought a mechanism that turns around and plays music, and I'm gonna be making some little decorations to hang from it. So I've only done a few so far and I've got more planned to finish at the weekend, but I've got everything cut out. So I'm hoping it won't take me too long. So this is the little rabbit that I've stitched and I sketched this pattern out myself and I've used some wool and polyester felt that I picked up from a shop called Paper and String. I'd got a number of di little swatches that the different colours that they did so that I could pick exactly the colours that I wanted to go with the sort of curtains and stuff I've got in the baby room. And I just used the blanket stitch technique to finish the edges of the little bunny. And I've just hand stitched a little face on for both sides there. I used a little bit of white fleece to do his little cotton tail and I thought he was really cute. So I've also made a little fox because it's like a little woodland theme. I drew him out after I'd seen some inspiration pictures online and I'm trying to do them so that they've all got their eyes shut because they're sleepy. And this again is made from the same wool felt but in a different colour that's actually a mixture of wool and polyester and then I've used the white here as some fleece that I already had in my stash. I think if I made them again though I'd also order some white wool felt as well rather than using the fleece because it's easier to sort of handle. It does fray slightly at the edges the fleece that I'm using. So that's the second one I've made. And I've also made a little hedgehog and so the back of the hedgehog is all one piece of dark grey felt and then I've stitched a lighter grey felt onto the front and tried to do it so that you couldn't see the stitches from the back. That's just um, stuffed inside as well. And then I've added some little paws and little feet and some little ears. And I stitched his face on. And he looks quite cute, doesn't he? He looks a bit of a, a bit of a funny looking hedgehog, but I think I'm quite happy with it. So I've got those three little animals 
and I have been starting to do some leaves as well. So quite a lot of people when they've done mobiles for the woodland theme, they've done sort of single layered leaves. I thought it might be nice to have some leaves that actually, but I thought it might be nice to have a, a like a double layer of fleece with the stuffing inside and then I've just stitched the veins on the top there so that they're really nice and sturdy leaves rather than being too thin. So I'm going to go thread those above the the little animals and I've got a different colour of leaf as well but I will show you the rest of them finished next week hopefully. Um, so that is going to be my little mobile project. I will also next week give you the link to where I got the actual mechanism from as well and I'll show it to you on the podcast so that you could get one too if you wanted to have the same mechanism. So next is my blast from the past section. So last week I showed you last year's sort of Christmas sock and wrap pattern that I designed but I did design a sock pattern the year before which I thought I'd show you this time because it's getting up to Christmas and I thought you might be interested in a sort of Christmassy themed pattern. So these are the candy cane socks. So these are knitted in a colourway that I designed called Jingle Bell Rock and it's a micro striping yarn that I thought went really well with the little candy cane. So the candy canes go all the way down one side and actually the other side you don't have the candy canes on, it's just on the one side and they go all the way down the foot. There is a Christmas tree heel on the back uh, that's all detailed in the pattern and there is a form of sort of cables and also I've got a tutorial on how to do a one to five increase that's involved in the actual candy cane itself. So I will leave links to those in the description bar down below as well as the pattern. So this pattern is available on my website as well as Ravelry. And this pair is one that I've worn quite a lot. <laughs> they are a little bit um, worn compared to a brand new pair of socks but I thought it would be very appropriate as we're coming up to Christmas. So that is this week's blast from the past. Before I go on to the next bit though, these are my Woodaco sock blockers that I picked up and they're from an Etsy shop from a European seller and I'll leave a link to these in the description bar down below as well. The sock blockers that I've got my Starlight Wishes socks on, these are Bryson sock blockers and I'll leave a link to those as well. So next it's okay, I found, <laughs> I found a cheats way to have some confessions. <laughs> I'd seen, I was looking on the Guthra Ghani Instagram account and I saw Lauren had got the most beautiful dress fabric that I just thought, oh, I said, Adam, look at that fabric, isn't it beautiful? He said, I'll tell you what, I'll get you some for Christmas. So I thought, yes, yes. <laughs> So he has picked me up some. I have actually um, stolen it just to show you guys because I'm sure that by the time I show it to you at Christmas that it'll all be sold out. But this is a fabric that is specifically sold by Guthra Ghani and it's designed by a lady called, let me look on the selvage, I can't remember her name. Um, Rachel Parker and it's exclusively for Guthra Ghani. Let's hopefully be able to show you that. Rachel Parker for Guthra Garni. And this is a beautiful viscose. It's got some really nice drape. I'd say that um, it's a sort of a medium weight viscose and it doesn't, it's not see-through at all, which is absolutely wonderful. But look at those colours, absolutely beautiful. So I got Adam to get me a couple of metres so that I could make myself like a blouse or a shirt with it. And I thought, well, I'll wash it before I give it back to him to wrap and then it'll be ready to sew if I get some minutes over Christmas to do some sewing. And it's very, very buttery. I'm really pleased with how it feels. Really nice quality fabric. Um, I do, I'm very confident actually that whenever I've bought anything from Guthra Ghani, it's it's always really lovely. So um, even though it is quite expensive fabric, um, it's worth an investment if you know sort of the pattern's going to fit you and you're going to really enjoy wearing the piece. So there we go. That's my naughty confessions for this week. I may have purchased some fabric for myself as well for Christmas. <laughs> I stay for Christmas. It's just my excuse really. But it hasn't quite arrived yet so I don't look quite so guilty. Hopefully be able to show you that next week. <laughs>
<laughs> so my last section is my shop update or shop information section. I have updated some of the needle kits in the shop so that there is more choices of the different um, colours of fabrics that you can get with the cases with the higher higher needle sets. Um, so these are some of the premium plus needle sets where they have a full needle set that's I think it's between 2.75 and 5 millimeter, 5 millimeter needles which is like the small set and they're the sets um, that I find useful because that's the things that I knit the most. There are five inch long tips in I do the steel the sharp and the bamboo versions of these and I've got some larger sets as well which go five and a half millimeters upwards so they're in these beautiful brocade prints um, which are really lovely really lovely quality I've got some of the flyer set kits in the bamboo and some more of the crocheted sets the crochet hook sets the higher higher ones in these really pretty brocade um, cases as well. I think there's another blue one as well that you can choose from. I think um, out of out of the stockists of the higher higher needles I don't think many places allow you to sort of select what colour you want so that's what I was trying to do um, with the drop down boxes if you're looking for a Christmas present and you want a particular colour you'll be able to choose which colour that you're getting. So those are already in the shop so if you're looking for a Christmas gift of a needle set they're available now. I've restocked some of the opal yarns that I put in the shop last week because they went so well um, so I have stocked a few more of those so last week I showed you that I'd got some of the blossom chart keepers all the large ones have sold out and I can't get any stock in as yet because they'd all sold out at the the um, the warehouse but I do have quite a few of the small ones left and this is big enough for an a5 or folded over piece of a4 um, this is the size that I tend to use but it is handy to have the magnets to put on your chart so that if you're doing a very complicated lace chart or colour work you've got those little magnets to to mark where you are um, on the pattern so I also wanted to mention that I'm quite close to, um, to my due date of my baby being born so I am planning on recording a podcast next week but I have recorded a couple of extra little bonus videos which I'm going to upload the next couple of weeks after that episode so that you've got something to watch So I am hopefully planning on doing like a weekly vlogmas but we shall see how busy I am. I'm going to leave my online shop open there's probably going to be a period of uh, a sort of a week or two where the shipping is going to be a lot slower than normal but I will put a banner across the top of the website just to warn you when that's happened I will be popping a post on my stories on my Instagram page I think when the baby does arrive so that you you're sort of kept informed so don't forget to follow me on Instagram I'm also craft house magic there as well I'll see if I can also do a stories on YouTube but I've not really done that before so we shall see how that goes especially when I'm really tired with a new baby <laughs> so i think that's all for today thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and i shall see you in the next episode bye